The cookie, the cookie itself. <laughs> the ultrasound. The cookie. Wait, more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a hand? You want me to hand it to you? Yeah, I think. Here, do you want, you got, you got it? I'm not okay, really helping. Okay, it's going in, done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good job, bye. Oh! <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Claire. We're in the BA Test Kitchen and today I'm making gourmet Girl Scout cookies. This box looks like it's been opened. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Girl Scout cookies are sold only through actual Girl Scouts, <laughs> children, and it's only certain times of the year in different parts of the country, so we had to basically put in like a special order. I don't know, I haven't had Girl Scout cookies in a very long time. I don't see any Girl Scouts around to like order cookies from. Do children like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're actually really... <laughs> I'm actually really good with kids. I just don't talk to them that much. I was a brownie for one season. <laughs> and my friends and I all did it together and we sold Girl Scout cookies. I think I sold like 40 boxes. And I was like, this is hard. We went up and down the blocks of our neighborhood. Not that many people bought it, but like the person who won sold like 342 and I was never gonna do that. And then I was like, I don't think I'm so into this. All right, so this is Thin Mint. Such a good cookie. I love Thin Mints. They're such a good size. Oh, just such a good little cookie. So crisp, so simple. These are so good. As soon as you bite in, you get some of the like aroma of the mint. It's just so good. It's just so perfectly balanced. Caramel Delights, AKA Samoas. Samoas are my favorite because I like coconut. Like as a recipe developer, I wish that I had come up with this shape and decoration for a cookie. It's so fun and playful. It looks like very much kind of a shortbread type cookie. And then there's caramel, toasted coconut flakes, and some kind of chocolate thing. The cookie itself is really tender, but all the texture really comes from the coconut, which is very, very chewy. It's really sweet. What next? The tagalong? Crispy cookies layered with peanut butter and covered with a chocolatey coating. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about that. How'd that happen? God, I love peanut butter. Peanut butter and chocolate. Looks like it's a lighter chocolate coating than Thin Mint. This is a darker chocolate and this is lighter. In this cookie, there's a round kind of shortbread -y cookie, then like a smaller disc of peanut butter filling in the center and then covered in chocolate. What's good about these is the saltiness of the peanut butter. Those are top three. Ooh, these are new. We have the scoop on Lemon Ups. Crispy lemon cookies baked with inspiring messages to lift your spirits. <laughs> I am creative. Ooh. <laughs> I am creative. Oh my God. I am a go-getter. I'm a leader. I am gutsy. I am strong. I love these. Were you a Girl Scout? Yes. Really? Did you win? Obviously. Did you win? Win. Like win sell twice. the most? <laughs> Sorry. Did you it wasn't sell? A competition. <laughs> yes, it was. Did you sell the was? most cookies? I guess not. <laughs> um, what's your favorite? The caramel delights. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh. AKA Samoas. Yeah, AKA Samoas. In Texas, they were called Samoas. So, they're so sweet. I know they're so sweet. What flavor or flavors mm. should I make for this episode? I think you should go with our big three: Thin Mint, Samoa, Tagalong. Okay. This is the only Girl Scout cookie that matters. Wow. They weren't always called Samoas. Like when I was growing up, it was Caramel Delights. Mm. It's one of the great cookies of the world. Really? Tag along. Oh. Which one are you making? <laughs> okay, so we agreed on three. What are the three? Samoas, Tag along, Samoa, Thin, thin Mint. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. I feel good about those. That's what I would have said from the beginning. This could not be easier, by the way. Could do this blindfolded. So I'm gonna clean this off and then we'll start to do a little research. Let me measure these. Okay, so a thin mint, four and a half centimeter diameter. Tagalongs are also four and a half. These are all four and a half. The working theory is that all of these cookies are made out of the same cookie, same dough. I mean, these look very, very similar. So the tagalong cookie looks like it has a depression. And I'm a little bit surprised at the, at the shape because it's not actually just a depression. There's like a weird little like button lip around the center. 
I might have to make two separate types of cookies, one that's only Thin Mint and then one that's a cookie that I can use in both the Samoa and the Tagalong. The mint is definitely in the cookie. It's a little hard to tell if it's also in the coating. Time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. I'll start with Thin Mints. Enriched wheat flour, parentheses, flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, close parentheses, sugar, vegetable oil, shortening, parentheses, palm and palm kernel oil, close parentheses, cocoa, parentheses, processed with alkali, close parentheses, caramel color, high fructose corn syrup, salt, baking soda, soy less than natural, and artificial flavor. Oh, it says crispy chocolate wafers dipped in a mint fudge coating, which leads me to believe that the, according to this, the mint is only in the coating. Now this says, Crisp chocolatey cookies made with natural oil of peppermint. Why are they different sizes? <laughs> Is one of these bootleg? These have different descriptions on the boxes and different ingredients. So this one says manufactured for little brownie bakers. Well, this one says manufactured by ABC Bakers slash Interbake Foods LLC. One company is probably making Samoas and one is making, marketing the same cookie as Caramel Delights. They all have the same baseline of ingredients and then this one has peppermint extract, this one has peanut butter, and this one has sweetened condensed milk and coconut. I wanna go see what I can find online. Best selling girls cookies in order. One, Thin Mints. Two, Caramel Delight slash Samoas. Three, Tagalongs. Okay, so we picked the top three. <gasps> How Girl Scout cookies are made. Here we are. Did you know that? You yes, we did know that. Look at how the Tagalongs are filled. They're not like piping the filling into the center of the buttons. They're just coating the whole thing. Little Brownie Bakers in Louisville, Kentucky. Ooh, North Sioux City, South Dakota is the other one. Wow. So I feel like I've been eating the Little Brownie Bakers one and not ABC Bakers. Okay, so this is saying that the mint flavor is in the coating. What a great video. It's so fast. Wow, they're pressed into a really dramatic wreath shape. So the wreath shape has a similar kind of well going around the whole circumference of the wreath. And that I think is so that it can be filled with the caramel. Here's my plan. I'm gonna start with making, I think one kind of cookie dough and I can flavor some of it with chocolate to see if I can get three cookies out of one dough preparation. My approach for the dough is to do something shortbread-like but with kind of a sable texture. Okay, so I'm starting with the butter and I'll add the sugar. And add a little bit of vanilla. I'm measuring out the flour, then two tablespoons cornstarch, kosher salt, baking powder. All right, so here's my dough. I'm gonna chill this down, put it in here, and then day two will really be about the actual cookie, trying to figure out molds, dialing in taste and texture. On day one, at the end of the day, I made cookie dough, uh -huh. and then I was like, this has to chill. Okay. But then I left for two weeks. <laughs> So okay. I had to start over. <laughs> I'm gonna actually just make that same, exact same dough recipe again, so I can bake it and test it out. All right. <laughs> Who's responsible for this? This has been freezing for a little while. It's maybe a little thick, but actually the girl soap cookies are a little thick. This is just a test for texture and flavor, so I don't, I'm not concerned about cutting cookies that are the same size or thickness. Oh, I burned them. Wow, that went so fast. All right, well, I'm not, not I think it was the oven's fault. So the cookies held their shape for the most part, but you can see there's this lacy edge where it, the, it's kind of spread a little bit, but that also could be because the oven was just really, really hot. So I might have to add a little more flour or cornstarch. Looks, looks pretty good, minus the burn part. Done. Wow, I think I did too good a job. It's very airy, very crisp and also very tender. So this is a little fragment of the interior of the Tagalong. They look similar in terms of structure. Actually, very similar in terms of airiness and texture. My version is a little more tender, a little bit, not more crumbly, but it just falls apart more easily. But I love the flavor. I think it's actually pretty close on a first try. This time I'm gonna add a bit of egg white, a little bit more flour, and a little less cornstarch. My God. Your sash. Oh my god, I didn't even see it. Why didn't anyone say anything? These are your badges? Yeah, they're my badges. Oh my god, it's on the front and back. Oh yeah, I was, yeah. All right, talk to me about these. Here's a square dancing patch. Thinking day? 
sports, I think. It looks good. It's looking right. <laughs> yes. It fits. Thank you. Oh, they look perfect. The surfaces are pale. There's a little bit of golden around the edge. I think it's the right amount of doneness. That was almost 10 minutes. They are basically right at four and a half centimeters, which is where I wanted them to be. Bottoms look good, little little bit of golden. I don't like the cornstarch in it. I think it's giving it kind of a grainy texture. So I might switch to all flour, but maybe I'll do cake flour because I want them to be very light. I actually think it's very, very close in terms of texture. I might just make those quick tweaks of swapping out cornstarch, swapping in cake flour for all of the flour. Alex, question. If you were gonna get a badge, what would your badge be for? This is making me realize that I've accomplished like nothing. <laughs> what would your badge be for? I think you get patience. Pa Ooh, that's oh, a good that one. That is a good one. It'd be the leisure badge. Dedicating myself to a lifestyle of leisure. Tell me. Fast and the Furious badge. I've watched all, oh, well, at the time there were only eight movies, but I watched them all in one week. Unless you can drive like they drive in Fast and the Furious, you don't get I'm the Fast and Furious out badge. Of practice, but I could learn. This is black cocoa. We use this for the Oreo episode. It is cocoa that's been treated multiple times with an alkali. This is peppermint extract. I've used it many times. All right, I'm gonna taste the dough. It doesn't really taste the least bit like chocolate, but it has a chocolate coating, so maybe that's okay. Okay, Claire, how about, oh my God. how about the friendship and encouragement badge? That's a good one. You're doing a great job. Thanks, I really Delaney. do value our time that we spend together. Thank you. I'm sure the cookies are gonna be great. No, hey, Delaney, sorry, that one's for Rhoda. What? Rhoda gets that one. Into the fridge. I don't want that. Don't try to just find things to throw at me. Don't do it all bad. Oh <laughs> okay, the dough is looking great. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer and try to figure out a, some kind of a mold or a stamp for the tag along cookies. All right, here's our old friend. This is this food grade putty where when I mix the two colors, I don't know what the chemistry is, but then it starts to set and it has to cure for 20 minutes and then it is a usable, somewhat flexible silicone mold. I mean, I don't think it's cheating, but I think that the best thing to do would be to make an impression of the cookie in the mold and then use that to punch out the dough. I wish I had done this on something I could then move because now I can't move it. But in 20 minutes, I'll pop out the cookie and the mold should be ready. In the meantime, I'll punch out some of the cookies. The center of the Samoa is one centimeter in diameter, so I have to find a one centimeter cutter. I'm looking for like a, a large-ish round tip. Oh, right. I forgot about the part where the there's like a moat inside the wreath and the caramel sits and rests into that. I'm looking for a circle like this size, but that's not so sharp. Do you wanna use my bottle? The goal is to create a little channel running all, all the way around the cookie. I think that this is important for the Samoa because if there's nowhere for the caramel to go, it's just gonna run right off the cookie. So I think it's important in giving the caramel like an anchor, something to stick to. They look good. They held that channel relatively well better than I was hoping actually. I don't know if it's going to be enough of a space for the caramel. At least I think it was a really good first pass. The chocolate ones puffed up quite a bit, which I'm surprised by, but that might be because I worked that dough a lot more. That's for a Samoa? <laughs> ah, look. What? There's like a channel. A channel? For the caramel to run through. Oh my God. I know. The mint, I'm sorry. Yeah? It's just awesome. <laughs> okay, good. I didn't know where you were going with that. 
I could take a little more chocolate flavor. I love the mint. Oh, really? Okay. And it's going to get dipped anyway. True. Right? So True. this is delicious. Okay, great. I think one dough to rule them all. Well, now it's actually going to be two doughs because I'm going to... Two doughs to rule them all. <laughs> I think I'll keep the black cocoa, but then add maybe some Dutch, Dutch process. Dutch. And I'll keep the peppermint the same. Mm, you know. I think that it could also be drier. I mean snappier. So like this, there's, there's a, a wetness there, in the yeah. center. Yeah. So, okay. So that was a good test. I want to come back to the mold I made of the tagalong. Just pop that guy out. It took a pretty nice impression of it. The downside is that I have to kind of form them one at a time and then chill them and then pop them out and then form another one. The last thing I'll do today is isolate the cookies from maybe three tagalongs, make more molds of just those and leave them overnight. Tomorrow will be about forming and baking all of the cookies, and then I might be able to move on to some of those coatings and caramel filling for the Samoas and that kind of thing. All right, day three. I feel like a lot of things happen on day three. I want to look at the molds that I made for tagalongs. They look pretty good. Nice, defined button shapes. What I'm going to do now is make a two times recipe of the plain cookie base and then I'm gonna make a one times recipe of the chocolate version separately on its own. I do need softened butter though, so I'm going to put this butter in the microwave. Oh, this, my, I can't use this microwave, it's too disgusting. Me, oh. That microwave is a disgrace to this test kitchen. It is horrifying. While this is softening, I'm gonna go clean out that microwave. I'm so tired of looking at this, this is embarrassing. You're gonna have to blur this out. Oh. I'm taking this straight to the dish pit. This maybe has never been cleaned. I'm just in the middle of a really intense, scary process. A piece of extremely cooked on tomato sauce. Oh, got it, okay. This is a really good illustration of like my problem getting work done. It's like I usually just end up cleaning instead. Oh, this is the worst part. Ugh, ugh, oh, oh. No, Dan, stop, no. Ah, oh, all is right. In case it wasn't clear, that was really more about anxiety management than anything else. And the tweaks I'm doing on this one is just a little more cocoa. I'm gonna add some Dutch processed cocoa. So I'm gonna do one tablespoon of the black cocoa and one tablespoon of a good quality Dutch processed cocoa. Thank you. I'm gonna sift in the dry. It smells cocoa-y and pepperminty, but it seems, smells like it's in balance. Okay, into the fridge. And that took so long, the first batch might be ready. And I was right. So here's my plan. I'm gonna cut out the circles and then I'm gonna freeze it. And then any scraps that I have, I'm gonna use to form into my molds for Tagalog. So right now I'm only cutting circles for the wreath. We ever gonna find out what's happening with this vodka? So now I'm gonna keep rolling out the chocolate dough. Oh, I didn't even see the gin in the background. Can okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of this in the walk-in under refrigeration. Oh Easy. my God, Easy. Easy. thank Easy. you. Easy. So cold, this tray is very cold. Gabby, this jacket was so great, thank you. So here's that water bottle from yesterday. This is an extremely cold baking sheet. It's so cold, it hurts my hands. Okay, these are gonna come over to the oven. Thank you. I have all the punched out Thin Mints. And then basically everything is formed. I just have to make more of the tagalongs. Didn't I give you, ah, don't, 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 don't. I'm finding this enjoyable and comfortable and I'm feeling great. Okay, back into the freezer, maybe five minutes. These puffed up so much more than they did yesterday, which is kind of strange. I also kind of wish the channel was a little bit deeper but I think it's gonna be fine. At least it held the indentation. So I'm gonna let these cool. In the meantime, I'll put the Thin Mints in the oven. All right, these are a little tricky to figure out when they're done because 
they're already brown, and so I won't be able to see any browning. So I have to kind of go by touch. And I do think that they're done. Actually, the spread was pretty much the same. It's the same cutter. So at least all the cookies will be the same size. So that looks great. I think the dimensions look really good. Homemade's a little bit bigger because of the spread, but pretty close. The Thin Mint is much snappier, so I probably will end up dehydrating the cookies for at least a couple hours. They are right on the verge of being not sweet enough, but I think they have a really nice cocoa flavor and good amount of peppermint. I'm happy with that balance. Let me taste a wreath also. Such a good cookie, so tasty. I gotta remember this recipe, this is a good cookie. Before I bake the final tray, I am putting all of these in the dehydrator for at least a couple of hours. I wanna get that snap. Now I'm gonna go into the freezer, pop out the final three cookies for tagalongs and put them in the oven. These guys are ready, finally. These look good. Ow, 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 hot. I'm gonna put them in the dehydrator with the other ones. And now, fillings. This is finely shredded dried coconut. Just gonna bake this. While that's toasting, I'll put together ingredients for the caramel. I'm gonna make a, a caramel very similar to the one I made for Milky Way. But this time, instead of adding butter, I'm gonna add virgin coconut oil, which has a pretty strong coconut flavor. So everything else will keep the same. A little corn syrup, heavy cream, my vanilla extract, and some salt. And the idea is that this is a pretty stiff caramel that doesn't run all over the place. Look at how beautiful and evenly toasted this is. This is done. All right, so that's all the heavy cream. Now I'm gonna add the coconut oil. I'm gonna get this into a container and save it for tomorrow. And then I think the last thing I'll do today is make filling for the tagalongs. I just wanna say that this is very special homemade peanut butter by our good friend John, who's sitting right over there. He brought it in. <laughs> the peanut butter filling in the tagalong is pretty set. You can see it's almost dough-like. I can manipulate it and roll it around. I think my best bet is to do the filling that I made for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So I'm gonna beat this together with a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, which I'm eyeballing, and a bunch of kosher salt, which I'm also eyeballing. You can see it's looking a little bit dough-like. That's good. It is a little separated. I think that that peanut butter was just really high in fat, had a lot of oil in it, and so the oils are kind of exuding because it's hot. So I'm just kind of kneading it a little bit to bring the temperature back down. It tastes great. It's just kind of chewy. How much oil did you add to that peanut butter? I kind of like eyeballed it. It seems a little greasy. Oh. Like it's <laughs> dripping off of my hands. I could squeeze it out of this mixture. <laughs> Maybe I'll drain it. God, it's soaking through faster than I can tear the paper towels. <laughs> Maybe it's fine. I'm gonna let it set overnight and we'll come back tomorrow. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm feeling confident. I don't have a great feeling about this peanut butter. <laughs> it's not exactly the creamy filling that you get in a tag along. Um, it is a delicious crumbly peanut butter candy. It's not gonna be right for the tagalongs. I'm using my favorite peanut butter besides John's homemade peanut butter, which is Smucker's Natural. So what I think I'll do is try that same preparation again with a lower proportion of that sugar mixture, and maybe that's it. I like this peanut butter because the only ingredients are peanuts and salt, and it is a really salty peanut butter, which is also why I like it. And I also didn't mix it as much as I mixed it yesterday. Honestly, it needs to be sweeter. I'm gonna stir in powdered sugar to taste, basically. I think this is gonna work. I feel good about that. I'm gonna let it continue to cool and set a little bit. I think in the meantime, I can start filling the Samoas. So I'm just gonna try to coat this guy. It's definitely settling into that channel, which is good. Now I'm worried, actually, that the caramel is so set that the coconut won't stick to it. But let's, let's see, this is just a test. Oh, it coated. Okay, good. Oh, look how good it looks. Now I'm just gonna go one by one and just keep going until I've done all the Samoas. I wanted to do them all myself, but I was told I have to have help. So, thank you for, for thank you thank you for being here. Um, the strategy is. 
Thank you for being here. She's like, I hate that you're here. Are they done? Really? No, they're not done. This is only one of three types of cookies that I'm doing also. You're doing three? You're, ta you're tapping out? Hi. Rhoda! Hi! Oh my god, you're here! I, you're very, you're, I think you're good, Sarah. No, uh, I think you're good. I, I think you're good. She's redoing my work. No, I'm just doing a little finishing touch. Now it feels a little thin to me, but... I think it looks great. Okay. Let's dip it. How do you feel about the way you treated your friends? How do you feel about the way I treated people? Look, I appreciate everyone's eagerness to help me, but I just think it's better for everyone if I work alone. This is always how it was with group projects. I prefer to work alone. Look, I'm making a lot of cookies. I could have made like six and it would have been fine, but I chose to make a lot. The last thing I want to do before I move on to the chocolate stage is fill the tagalongs. This process should be a lot faster, hopefully. This is just a matter of scraping and spreading this filling onto the cookie. All right, look at my Girl Scout cookies. Now time for my least favorite part. I don't want to coat it. Sola around. Sola, help me. I don't want to do the chocolate part, it's hard. And like, it's gonna be so hard to get these coated in a thin layer. Rhoda? Rhoda, hi. I need your advice. So you want me to tell you you don't have to temper the chocolate? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> that was kind of what I was looking for. But I think, here's the idea. So my idea was if I add a, some additional cocoa butter, which is very solid at room temp, mm -hmm. to melted chocolate, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a cheat for tempering, mm -hmm. but because the coconut butter is very liquid at room temp, it thins out the chocolate, which will make it easier to coat in a thin layer. Mm -hmm. And I can help you too. Thanks, Rhoda. All right. I'm melting the chocolate. This is the milk chocolate. I'm really lost steam. They get the different. We already covered this. The cookies are getting different the kinds of chocolate. Are getting the dark chocolate <laughs> with peppermint extract, and the caramel delights and tagalongs are getting milk chocolate. Thank you, Rhoda. So the idea is that this cocoa butter will melt, and when the cocoa butter is melted, it's very liquid, and it will increase the fluidity of the chocolate, which will make it easier to enrobe. So that's that's the idea there. I'm gonna start with the tagalongs. So okay, that worked well. Wait, should I just be dipping them the whole way, you guys? I dropped it in, it fell. I think I should just be dipping them. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So these are gonna go into the fridge. I'm moving on to Samoas. So I just have to be careful not to drop them in the chocolate. All right. This is the last one, I dropped one. The one that we did in slow-mo is the one I dropped. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll see that replay. Everything else is looking great. Here's what I want to do. Before I chill these, the chocolate, I think, is at a good point thickness-wise where I'll get really clean lines if I pipe it. So I'm going to make, mm, I'll make a cornet. OK, that was the last one. I had enough chocolate, but I feel good. I'm happy with the way they look. The last step in this process is enrobing the Thin Mints, and I'm also gonna add my peppermint extract to this chocolate. You guys, can we do Cadbury eggs? Look how shiny and like beautiful and mirror finished they look. They'll go matte once they set. They look so flat and even. And I think that the coating is gonna be just the right thickness. I think my favorites are the Thin Mints. 
but they all look great. I'm gonna let these set overnight because I want more of my friends to be proud of me. And in the meantime, <laughs> God. All right, this is my stash. This looks like it's made for a child. Look at how small this is. <gasps> is this an actual Girl Scouts badge? <gasps> wow, look at this. Where did this come from? I used to iron on patches of stuff back in my bedazzling days. Oh, I think it's on there. Oh yeah, that's on there. Yes. <sighs> Should we write Troop Test Kitchen? <laughs> I can't believe I just did this. I just get really focused on tasks sometimes and then lose perspective that I just spent the last 40 minutes working on this. We all gotta go home. It's dark out. Uh, that was fun, that brought me back. I love days like today where I get to start off having already done the thing and all I get to do is wear my fun sash. I'm really excited about these. Um, oh no, they got a little, uh, there was like a little bit of fat bloom. It won't affect the flavor. It just makes the finish not as smooth looking. So I'm gonna start with tagalongs. I love the cross section. It looks very uniform. I like the amount of peanut butter relative to the amount of cookie. That looks really good. All right, look at this similarity. I guess that's what happens when you make the mold out of the real cookie and then use that. All of the elements feel really harmonious. It's not like you taste the cookie first and then the peanut butter and then the chocolate. It all marries together and the balance is great and I think it's really good. I love how smooth and thin they are. Colors are very similar too. I'm glad I used dark chocolate. I think that was the right call. I'm really pleased with how thin and even the coating is. Mm. You get like a nice saltiness at the end. I really like the balance of peppermint to chocolate. This feels like a little more of a grown up thin mint just because it's less sweet. What I think I nailed with this one is the proportions, the thickness of the coating on the bottom, the stripes on the top, the amount of coconut, and I'm happy that my version has more caramel. This version has really good chew. Cookie kind of breaks down, mixes with the caramel and the coconut, so you get this chewy texture, and then the amount of sweetness I think is really nice. Very happy with these. I'm happy with all of them. This was really fun. Purple. How's it look? Sola, would you like to taste a cookie? The texture is really cool because the cookie like melts right away and then mm -hmm. you have a lot of chewy caramel. Mm -hmm. In an ideal world, what Gourmet Makes does is create something that tastes the way you remember the original tasting when you were a kid, mm -hmm. you know? You made this way more complicated than I could have ever imagined. Really? Thanks. <laughs> I feel like that's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to go anywhere wearing this though. I don't want to go in the elevator. Do I have to say that we're going to go downstairs? I'm being forced to go downstairs and sell these <laughs> cookies <laughs> in the BA office. So here we go. Are we? Oh my God, you guys. It's the puffy paint is not quite dry. I'm sticking to it. Mom could have just brought the order form to her work. I could stay home. Oh my God, you guys, I'm doing it again. Ugh, I'm stuck again. Oh. Here we go. Hi, friends. Do you want to try one? I, I'm a tag along. Well, I'm a Oh, okay. One, oh, people really love the tag alongs. I love the tag alongs. Wow, I'm really glad. The cookie is so good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. On top of Andrew Yang. Yeah, on top of Andrew Yang. Hilarious. Okay. Do you like my I sash? I really like it. With the puffy paint? Would you like to try a cookie? What are these again? Tag along. Peanut butter. No, no, you don't want oh, that. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh Maybe God, try a Thin I Mint. Those, I love when Andy tastes things. You always they have... are so tender. I know. Maybe and like... They're so proportioned. This is wonderful. This might be my favorite thing you've ever created. Really? Yeah. That was kind of the crew consensus, too. Oh, God. See, I keep sticking oh, to it. <laughs> Let me go back to the test kitchen now. Been out of my natural <laughs> habitat long enough. This is going to go in our Gourmet Makes Museum along with my Mentos drying rack. And overall, this whole experience was kind of nostalgic and brought me back even more than the average Gourmet Makes, which is already pretty nostalgic. Thanks to the Girl Scouts for giving us a preview of the cookies before they go on sale in New York. And buy Girl Scout cookies from your local Girl Scouts. Money goes to a good cause. Teachers entrepreneurship and teaches leadership. And I appreciated all the support from my test kitchen colleagues and um, friends at BA. So that was great too. And John's peanut butter. Thanks, John. Here's how you make gourmet Girl Scout cookies.
To make the plain dough, in a medium bowl whisk one and a half cups cake flour, two tablespoons cornstarch, one teaspoon kosher salt, and one teaspoon baking powder. Beat two sticks of room temperature unsalted butter until smooth. Add a half a cup powdered sugar and beat until light. Add a large room temperature egg white and two teaspoons vanilla extract and beat until fluffy and smooth. Add the dry ingredients and mix on loads until combined. Form the dough into a disc and chill until cold. To make the chocolate dough, repeat the same dough recipe having all the quantities and whisking one tablespoon black cocoa and one tablespoon Dutch processed cocoa into the dry ingredients instead of the cornstarch. Add a quarter teaspoon peppermint extract to the dough along with the vanilla extract. Chill until cold. In the meantime, make the other cookie components. Toast one cup of finely shredded unsweetened dried coconut flakes in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, tossing once until golden brown all over. Set aside to cool. To make the peanut butter filling for the tagalongs, place one cup of natural smooth peanut butter in the bowl of a stand mixer. Add a slash of vanilla and a pinch of salt and beat briefly to combine. Bring a half cup sugar and three tablespoons water to a boil and stirring with a heat proof spatula to dissolve the sugar. Boil until the sugar syrup reaches 348 Fahrenheit. Turn the mixer on medium high and slowly stream all but a couple of tablespoons of the sugar syrup into the peanut butter, transfer to a bowl and let cool, then stir in more powdered sugar to sweeten if desired. To make the caramel for the Samoas, combine three quarters of a cup sugar, two tablespoons corn syrup, and two tablespoons of water in a small saucepan and stir over medium heat to dissolve. Bring to a boil and cook, swirling the pot and washing down the sides with a wet pastry brush until the mixture turns a deep amber. Slowly stream in a half a cup of heavy cream, stirring and taking care because the mixture will sutter, followed by two tablespoons of virgin coconut oil. Stir until the mixture is smooth, cook until the mixture reaches 250 Fahrenheit, then pour the caramel into a bowl without scraping the bottom or sides. Let it cool completely. To form the cookies, roll out the chilled cookie doughs between pieces of parchment paper until you have one eighth of an inch thick slabs. Chill until cold. For the Samoas, working with half of the plain dough, cut wreaths the same size as the Samoas using a round cutter for the larger circle on the wide end of a pastry tip for the smaller circle and use an appropriately sized bottle top to imprint a shallow centered channel running around each wreath. Chill the cookies. For the Thin Mints, use a circle cutter to punch out cookies the size of Thin Mints. Transfer to a baking sheet, spacing evenly and chill. For the tag use food grade silicone putty to make several molds of isolated tagalong cookies that have been scraped and cleaned of any peanut butter filling or chocolate coating. Let the molds cure, pop out the cookies, then fill the molds with the remaining plain dough. Freeze the dough until solid, then pop the cookies out of the molds onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Bake all the cookies on the center rack in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven until very lightly golden on the bottoms. Remove from the oven and let cool completely. To assemble the cookies, use a small offset spatula to spread a small amount of the peanut butter filling into the central depression of the tagalongs. Work a small amount of cooled caramel onto the surface of the wreaths, filling the channel and spreading the caramel across the entire surface in a thin layer. Dip the caramel side in the toasted coconut and set the cookies aside. To make the chocolate coating, combine about 12 ounces of milk chocolate discs and 1.2 ounces of cocoa butter cut into bits in a medium heat proof bowl and stir over a large saucepan filled with about an inch of gently simmering water until it's melted and completely smooth. Dip the tagalong cookies into the milk chocolate mixture to enrobe completely, then allow the excess to drip off and place the cookies on a chilled silpat lined baking sheet and chill until set. Dip the bottoms of the Samoa cookies in the same milk chocolate mixture and press onto a chilled silpat lined baking sheet. Pipe thin lines of chocolate all across the coconut coated surfaces of the Samoas. Chill until set. For the Thin Mints, combine about 8 ounces of dark chocolate, 0.8 ounces of cocoa butter, and more peppermint extract to taste in a medium heat proof bowl and melt over a double boiler as before. Dip the Thin Mints in the chocolate mixture like you did the Tagalongs and chill until set. I have to show both of you something. You cleaned it! Oh, oh my god, it looks amazing. Thank you. I don't know what went on in this microwave, no. but it was horrifying. <laughs>